Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just a few reminders that you are in listen-only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, we prefer that you type in your questions earlier or you can type in your questions anytime you want and those questions will be answered by our panelists in a Q&A segment. The recording and certificate of this webinar will be sent out to those who completed in two days' time. And our topic for today is about an introduction to building and wiring safety. This is a pre-recorded webinar and it was presented by Ali Hussein from Middle East. So without any further ado, let's start the webinar, Grace. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Megar webinar series. Today topic is an introduction to building and wiring safety. You can submit question at any time during the presentation by typing in the box and I will read the questions out during the Q&A segment at the end of the webinar. Our presenter today is Ali Hussein. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us, Ali, and you have the mic. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today, we will talk uh, about safety in low voltage distribution system or in basically building and low voltage installation. Uh, in the slide in front of you, I'm showing you uh, an example of a standard uh, uh, stating which tests needed to be done and at which limit uh, these tests are accepted or not, uh, accepting the distribution system in buildings. Uh, this is just an example uh, of a standard. Uh, there is many standards, British standard, IEC standard, uh, American standard, uh, to take these tests from, but basically most of them are similar in uh, uh, the way they present uh, the uh, uh, tests. So uh, to begin with tests, there are seven tests that usually done. The first one is to check the voltage and the frequency of your uh, input supply from uh, 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 your utility services. Uh, it should be within a limit uh, uh, of your nominal value. For example, if you have a 230 volt, 50 hertz, uh, they should be at least uh, uh, up to plus minus 5% of that uh, specified value for the voltage and even much, much uh, 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 higher accurate uh, in the frequency range. You should get uh, uh, these values uh, according to what your uh, utility states as Many of your appliances in home or in uh, office depends on these uh, 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 values. Then the second test is to do uh, an insulation resistance test uh, to your uh, distribution board to check the insulation uh, uh, that it is at highest value as possible to uh, uh, check if there is any degradation in the uh, insulation wiring uh, uh, around your circuits. Uh, uh, the third test or the third part of this example of uh, 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 a standard is to do loop test uh, where you test that each and every circuit has the proper looping for air uh, that it can withstand a short circuit current. Uh, it can make your safety devices inside your uh, uh, distribution system works fine and uh, according to its specification. Uh, the fourth uh, part of the uh, standard is to talk about earth uh, resistance to measure the electrode earth. Uh, 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 we will talk explicitly how to uh, achieve this test and how to do this test uh, and show some connection example to uh, get this test uh, correctly as it's very, very important to check your earth electrode uh, in the ground. Uh, the part six or, or four of the standard is to check the continuity uh, of your uh, protective earth conductor. Uh, this is very important to check the continuity of your earth uh, conductor from your distribution board to uh, uh, the electrode itself, because sometimes you have a very good uh, resistance value for your earth uh, uh, road, but your uh, wire that connects your copper wire that connects your earth road to 
uh, 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 your distribution board is not bonding correctly or bonding sufficiently enough uh, to give you a good conductivity uh, and to make your uh, protection devices work uh, 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 as should be. Then uh, you have the RCD test, or some of you may call them ELCD, uh, uh, where these devices, residual current uh, detector differential devices, uh, uh, used to protect against earth circuit or earth leakages. There are different ratings for them at how much earth leakage uh, should be in the device trip for different purposes. We'll talk about how to test them. Usually, you test how much. Uh, actual uh, 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 earth leakage current specified at, and also how much time it takes for this device to uh, uh, trip. The last test, in case you have a three-phase uh, distribution board, which is very common, uh, uh, and when you have a three-phase load in your distribution board, for example, a motor for a lift or an elevator, uh, a chiller motor, uh, something that uh, requiring a three-phase supply, you need to check the phase rotation of uh, your uh, uh, supply. It should be according to a standard L1, L2, L3, or A, B, C, or R, Y, B, depending where you are from. So uh, this webinar mainly will be focusing on doing a practical uh, session rather than just a theoretical talk. So I have here a camera showing you uh, the setup I have here uh, in front of me. Uh, I have a distribution board connected to some circuits uh, uh, and a testing device, MFT multifunctional MIGR uh, series device. We will be conducting these seven tests uh, and give some example on how to uh, con conduct these tests and check uh, an actual measurement on this. Uh, setup we have in front of us. Uh, so we will start first with the insulation resistance test, uh, then the continuity and earth uh, resistance test, as these three tests are a uh, dead test. You conduct them where uh, your distribution board is de-energized. After that, we will power up our distribution board and check our voltage and frequency uh, as it should be to the nominal value. Uh, unfortunately, the phase rotation, uh, we will not be able to conduct that test as I don't have a three-phase uh, power supply here to uh, my uh, distribution board, but we will show some examples on how to conduct uh, this test. Uh, then at last, we will do a loop impedance test and then an RCD, uh, uh, or some of you call it ELCD uh, test and check the uh, measurement value. So, I hope you see me all. How are you? So, the first test is insulation resistance test. It's a dead test that we conduct on uh, your live to earth circuits and your neutral to uh, earth circuit. Uh, please note that this test, let me give you a better zoom on our setup. Uh, please note that this test uh, should be conducted when your uh, distribution board is dead. And also uh, check that nothing is connected to your uh, circuits. We just want to check the wiring, not the actual appliance that is connected to this uh, circuit. So when you have uh, light things, when you have uh, uh, any appliances connected to, through a socket, uh, or through a terminal directly, please remove that before conducting this uh, test. As these appliances have a different test for them to be checked uh, once they are imported inside the uh, border country. Uh, so remove any socket, remove any lamp. If you cannot remove the lamps, for example, you can just switch them off and the uh, switch uh, that you have in rooms or in uh, places. So. To conduct this test, first you will connect your negative terminal to the earth bar. Make sure that your connection is correct. Let me give you a better zoom for that as well. Connect your negative to your earth bar. 
make sure it is holding correctly. Turn on your device. We will use 500 volt for this test as most of these wiring uh, at 230 volt should be able to withstand uh, even 500 volt DTC, DC test for a short uh, duration. So the first thing you want to do is to check your instrument. So you short your two test leads together and press test and it should give you zero vo voltage and uh, uh, zero ohm uh, mega ohm value. Means that your both connection for the positive and negative is connected correctly and it's measuring a dead short. After that, you can start the test. So first I will do uh, my blue phase here. I can check it from this side. Start doing the test. And as you can see, the measurement here for me is showing that it's injecting 543 volt and measuring a value higher than 999 mega ohm. Mean it's higher than what the device can read. Uh, please note that the insulation resistance value should be at least uh, higher than one mega ohm. This is the lowest value accepted by standard uh, for uh, 230 volt uh, circuits. Uh, getting a value higher than 999, it's a very good sign that our insulation in a very good shape. I can do it now for other phases. I can just turn on MCBs and do for red phase. Again, a higher value higher than 999, and then to yellow phase. Now, both uh, my values for all the three phases is very good. Now I can check my in neutral uh, 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 to earth uh, insulation resistance. So I'll put it in my neutral bar, start the test. Now, as you can see here, it's showing me that it's seeing a dead uh, short. Usually inside substations, they do connect the neutral to earth. In some systems, for example, for us here in Bahrain, they do connect them. So to avoid this problem, since your distribution board, the neutral should not be connected to the earth. It's only done in substation. You can remove your uh, neutral coming from the supply or you can turn off your uh, 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 RCDs since they are connecting both and now you should get no connection between neutral and earth. And you can see here, I'm getting 999 volt uh, uh, measurement for my insulation resistance between uh, neutral and earth. By this test, I made sure that all my wiring is connected and uh, are in good shape. Now I can move on to the uh, next test in my sequence. The next test is continuity test or what we call bonding test. Here where we, we, where we will check our earthing conductor that coming from my earth bar here that going to my electrode is connected properly. Uh, now, unfortunately, I don't have an electrode here with me to connect an, uh, a, a wire measurement to it. So I will just try on this wire here connecting to my body and check the measurement. Usually, um, a lot of equipment that specified for this testing does not have something called four wire measurement. They have only two wire measurement. So your test lead resistance value uh, will be included in your test. So a lot of uh, devices give you the ability to do something called nulling to your uh, test lead. So I will go to my continuity mode test. And in this continuity mode test, I will connect both my leads and as you can see 
there is an actual value inside. You can see it. I can click on the null button. And now, even though I am still connected both, uh, the resistance value is zero. The value of my resistance of my test lead has been nulled. Now I contact, can conduct my uh, actual test. So I connect to my earth bar inside my distribution board. I make sure that the connection is solid and very good. And uh, in many cases, your electrode will be uh, further away from your uh, uh, distribution board. Uh, then you can use a long wire. And don't forget to know that uh, long wire resistance as well. Uh, long wire to connect to this uh, earth road and measure the continuity value of your uh, uh, earthing uh, cable. So I will just give an example here, connect to this. Uh, and it's showing me a value very, very low, 0.03. Uh, I don't know if you can see the 0 .0, 0 0.03 ohm, which is very, very good value. It's always should be very, very low value uh, for this uh, test. Now, <coughs> I have checked my insulation resistance. I have checked my everything conductor is conducting properly. The last dead test I'm going to do is my uh, electrode, earth electrode test. Now, again, as I mentioned to you, I don't have an, an actual electrode to test here with me in the office. But what I have is a small, Thank you here showing as uh, assimilating uh, an electrode connection or uh, uh, an, an earth soil inside this uh, container. Now in this container, I have some sand uh, uh, and uh, I have some terminals on the side. So I will consider this terminal as my electrode in the sand. Uh, to conduct this test, I connect According to the following way, I have an electrode in the green wire, as you can see here. And then I need to put two spikes, one at a certain distance and another one at a certain distance to measure how much is my earth resistance from here uh, uh, to the uh, ground. Uh, these values for uh, measurement is usually uh, done depends on how much length between the two ends here, between the green and the red cable. In some different devices, the colors might change, but uh, we call them electrode, uh, voltage probe or potential probe, and uh, current probe. So usually the voltage probe is 62% of your current uh, probe. The difference between them, uh, between the electrode and the uh, current probe. So I will do some connection here and take the measurement. Go to my earth measurement. This is my electrode here, connection. Then I have Group, yeah. Just make sure this is properly. And the last thing here I have is the earth electrode. Now I have this is considering my earth road. I have here my current to probe. And in the middle here, I have, or in the at least 60%, I have my uh, air throat. So now I will start the test. Now, depending on how much reading you got, different countries got different uh, standard values, depending on their soil studies. Uh, here, I got a value of 23 ohm. 
uh, measurement of my uh, earth electrode. Uh, any value lower than 20, according to the British standard, is acceptable value. Uh, some other countries, for example, for us here in Bahrain, a value lower than one ohm is considered acceptable. Higher than that is not uh, acceptable by the utility. Uh, so this is earth test. In case you need to lower your earth resistance value, you can drop more electrodes in the ground uh, to get a, a better uh, resistance value for uh, your earth electrode. Now I have checked all my dead tests, the insulation resistance, the continuity bonding test, and my earth uh, device. Now I can power up my uh, circuit and do the other test. I am uh, confident now more that I have a better safety in my uh, distribution board since all the insulation is good. Uh, my earthing conductor and my earthing electrode is in good shape as well. So now we will go conduct the other test here. Just remove this wiring. The first test I want to check is the voltage and frequency. And in addition to that, we can do a phase rotation as well oh, with this mode. So I will go change my MFT to voltage frequency rotation mode. Uh, and then I will power up my circuit breaker here. I'll power up my RCDs. And check the measurement for the voltage and frequency. So I'll do a measurement between the line and the neutral. If you have between line to line, you can check the voltage as well. It should be 400 volt for line to line and uh, 230 for line to neutral. So showing me here 230 volt. Ah, sorry, this is not the neutral. Ah, not this one, sorry. Yeah, like this. Now it's 230 volt showing me between the line uh, neutral. I can check if you have three phase, you can connect it to the three phases here and check how much voltage measurement you should get between uh, uh, all of them. And also we'll show you what is the phase rotation as shown in the two pictures uh, below. L1, L2, L3, or if the case it's reverse rotation, it, should, it will be L1, L3, L2. Now it doesn't really matter what is the coloring coding you have here? What doesn't really matter is that you got the right uh, rotation or phase rotation correctly, L1, L2, L3. And this is very, very important for uh, motors load, uh, three-phase motor loads that require you to have a three-phase uh, connection. The next test I'm going to conduct is loop testing and in this loop testing I will be testing not from my distribution board but directly from my circuits I have so uh, uh, I have a socket here that I can connect to directly and measure what is my loop impedance uh, from this socket so I will connect take it to loop to the ground. I can check the loop impedance between the line and the protective earth and between line to line and line to neutral. Uh, in case you want to do this test between line and protected earth, uh, there is no tripping of the RCD for this, uh, uh, this instrument. 
but in case you did it for line to line or line to neutral, uh, most likely you will be tripping the RCD for each uh, measurement. So today we're only going to conduct between the line and uh, uh, earth conductor. So I will connect here to my circuit or socket here. Once I have connected, showing me that it is measuring 230 volt, it means there is power in there. If I shut it off, it's not seeing any voltage, but if I turn it on, it's seeing 230 volt. Now I can click the test button and start measuring my loop uh, impedance of the circuit. Uh, gave me a value here, 1.48 uh, ohm, which is a very good uh, value. Typically, we'll get values between 1 and 5 ohm, uh, depending on how good your uh, loop impedance is, what is the types of wires, and how long the wires are running uh, 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 for this loop impedance. Uh, the interesting thing as well, it's showing me a uh, current value on top of my measured value, it's called prospected uh, short circuit current. Uh, this is the value uh, when a fault happened between my protective earth and my live circuit or live uh, 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 conductor. Uh, the current will be this uh, much, depending on the voltage uh, that has been measured uh, earlier as well. And interestingly, this value is very, very important for you when you're doing testing, uh, loop uh, testing, because the value of your prospective short circuit current would determine how much braking capacity uh, your MCBs should have inside your uh, uh, distribution board. So for these MCBs, I have a braking capacity of 6,000 ampere. Uh, and showing you here an example of two measurements. One of them is 0.25 ohm, give you 9 to 20 ampere, and the another one is 0 0.02 ohm, which give you 11.5 kilo ampere uh, prospected short circuit uh, current. This value, uh, uh, the value of 11 k uh, kilo ampere, uh, will exceed the example of uh, MCB that's shown in the picture, which is 10,000 ampere. In case of a fault happen, that MCB will not be able to break that fault. The two contacts will weld together from that high current. So it is very important not to have very low uh, ohm uh, and also not to have very high uh, ohm values of your loop uh, uh, impedance. The values typically between one and five is could considered a good value for uh, your loop testing. High value of loop testing indicate either you have a bad uh, uh, protective earthing conductor connected or uh, uh, you are running very uh, low or thin wires to your protective earthing, thus the short circuit is very low. Your protection device might not work uh, correctly uh, when required. The last test I want to conduct here is the RCD test. Uh, the RCD test, we usually conduct two tests uh, 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 for us here. These two tests is to check the delta I or the actual current value of your RCD and uh, <coughs> give you a better picture of our RCD. And uh, to check the trip time that this RCD takes to trip when it detects a fault current uh, or leakage current high, higher than its uh, value. So, so I have two RCDs here with me. Uh, one of them is 300 milliampere uh, rated, and the other one is rated for uh, 10 milliampere. Usually, you will find 300 for lighting and AC and ceiling fans, for example, things that away from touching, touch, being touched by uh, people. 
give you a good protection for that. But the things that usually people can touch, for example, sockets, and uh, uh, for example, uh, cooker, uh, dryer, uh, vacuum, uh, water heater, water pump, things that people might touch, they usually have a lower value of RCD uh, protection for them. Usually it's 10, uh, 30 uh, milliampere. For us today here, I got even much lower value, 10 milliampere, since uh, my main uh, distribution board inside my office is 30 milli. I don't want to use similar value not to trip that and lose connection to the uh, internet. I will be only using 10 milli uh, to do this test. So the first test I'm going to do is take it to uh, ROM test and my actual value is 30 or 10 milliamp, my rated uh, uh, of this uh, uh, RCD. <clears throat> then I will connect to my earth, my neutral and my line and start doing this test. Connect to my earth. Sure I have a proper connection. Then connect to my neutral. I have a proper connection. Then at the uh, line side of my uh, RCD, in the, uh, after my RCD, I will connect my red probe and start the test. You will see now it's measuring uh, 234 volt. The value of the full voltage is measuring. Now I can click start the test and it starts ramping the current until my RCD trips and consider it as my uh, actual value. Now it's rated at 10 milliamp and the actual value that I got is 9 milliamp here. You can see. Now I can uh, uh, do a timing test after this test to check that my RCD is tripping in the correct time. So I have different values or different modes. I can go half my rated current, which will not trip it, full of my rated current one time or five time of my rated current. I will only be doing the uh, one time of my rated current. So I will turn on my RCD again. Connect, it's measuring 230 volt. I click, start, flip again, and showing me here 26.9 millisecond uh, trip time, which is a very, very good uh, uh, measurement. Uh, let's do one more measurement at half of my rated. Now, at half of my rated, this RCD should not trip for this measurement as it's rated at 9 uh, milliamp. So I'll click. Just again. Now my RCD did not trip, and the measurement value here showing me it's above than 1999, above than two full second or 2000 millisecond, which is an acceptable value, uh, uh, or it mean it's above the actual test duration, means that the device did not trip at all. That will be all uh, for the practical part. Please, if you have any question regarding any test, please uh, write them down in the question bins. Uh, now we will move on to the uh, other part of this webinar, talking about MIGR solution for testing uh, building wiring. So as for MIGAR solutions, we have the first range is the MFT, which I just show you in the picture or in the uh, practical uh, uh, webinar. Uh, this MFT range can do all the seven tests, uh, uh, depend on the option that you ask for this device. We have two series of it, the MFT 1700 series, which is based on the British standard 7671. Uh, if case your country is working based on this standard, then this uh, series will be uh, the best for you. 
uh, as I mentioned, there are different models for each series. For the M1700 series, we have four models. Uh, the MFT10, which is the lowest end. Sorry, a bit. The MFT10, which is the lowest end. Uh, it has no loop test or limited loop testing inside the device and no earth resistance test uh, whatsoever. So we will require an additional uh, dedicated device for earth resistance when you get the 1710. 1720, it is a medium end a device, give you full functionality of loop testing all different modes, line to line and line to neutral uh, loop uh, uh, resistance or loop impedance test, uh, but still does not have uh, earth testing. The high end uh, device you have is uh, 1730 uh, model, which can give you a full loop and earth testing uh, inside the device with the ability to data storage and download the result from your device to the PC via Bluetooth. Uh, the, last, the highest end device we have is 1740. It has an additional feature called confidence meter inside your loop testing that will give you whether your loop measurement is very confident or very good or not uh, very good. It has a lot of noise in it. Uh, it's usually specified for industrial uh, uh, application, not for uh, uh, commercial or uh, residential uh, 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 application testing, as in industrial application, they have a lot of noise coming from different places uh, and they require a device that can handle this noise and give you an indication in case a noisy environment uh, exists. A different series is the MFT 1800. It is basically in functionality very similar to the 1700 but it also compliant to the IEC standard as well uh, as the uh, British standard. Uh, it also have some uh, additional features uh, for testing some special types of RCDs uh, uh, for solar installations. Uh, usually this is very popular in Europe where they have a solar uh, installation and they have a certain type of uh, RCDs to be tested with the MFT 1800. Uh, and again, there are four models very similar to the 1700, so I will not go through them again. Then in case you uh, uh, go for the lower end of uh, MFT series for doing conducting these tests, and you require a dedicated earth tester, we have a dedicated earth uh, testers. Uh, 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 called DET, Digital Earth Tester. We have a uh, first one called DET uh, Clamp Virgin, which it is a stakeless earth tester, much easier to be conducted uh, for the earth tester, but uh, this tester will not give you a, a meaningful result or an actual value unless you have more than one electrode in the ground. If you have less than one road or, or only one road, uh, no measurement will be able be, to be conducted. But in case you have more than one electrode for high, uh, huge building or substations, uh, this device is very, very good and very easy. You just connect the clamp around the road and it will give you the earth resistance uh, like that. No need to connect any stakes in the ground like I show you in the uh, presentation. Then we have the uh, three-point or two-point testers called DET3. It has two versions uh, that can do one uh, uh, called TC and one called TD. These two uh, earth testers do a similar job to what I just showed you here. Uh, 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 the TC version allow you to connect an additional clamp your electrode and be able to measure your electrode without removing it from the building. As in the normal way, you require to remove the wire from your building to the electrode and do the measurement on the electrode by itself only without being connected to the uh, uh, live circuit. With the TC version, you can do using something called ART method or attach road technique method uh, without disconnecting the uh, 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 protective earthing conductor from your uh, electrode. 
Then for in case you want only to do loop and RCD testing, we have a specific range for you. Uh, we have three uh, series devices uh, for this uh, uh, range. We have the LTW, which has three models with different voltage levels to conduct loop test only. It can do it, uh, two wire uh, loop test for uh, uh, protective earth to line or line to line or even line to uh, 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 neutral. Uh, uh, in case you want to do an RCD test only, a device that can do only RCD test, we have the RCD T to 310 through 20 and 330, which they give you different values or different ranges to be selecting from. Uh, uh, they, they can also, uh, we also have a combined device called LRCD, which combine both RCD and loop testing uh, uh, together. Uh, you can uh, have these devices instead of uh, uh, an MFT, you can get a DAT and uh, 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 LRCD to do this test. The last thing we have is insulation uh, testers or insulation resistance tester, uh, which these uh, two series specified for this application. We have the MIT 200 series, which is a very small pocket size device uh, uh, that is uh, conduct and insulation resistance up to 1,000 uh, mega ohm or uh, 1 giga ohm of resistance. It as well have a continuity tester where you can uh, do a continuity and null the lead and do a bonding test with this uh, device as well. Uh, and if you want a higher end than this one, a more rugged device, uh, we have the MIT 300, which in addition to do uh, 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 insulation and continuity test, it also have voltage measurement uh, for AC and DC with addition to the frequency measurement on the device uh, as well. Uh, that will be the end of my uh, webinar session. Now we will go to the question session. Okay, guys, so that's the end of the presentation from Ali. If you have any questions, you can write it now in the chat box and we'll try to answer it for you. But before going to the question and answer portion, I would like to remind everyone that there will be a pop up screen when you close this webinar box and uh, there will be a survey form that you need to fill out so that we can use that uh, feedback to improve our future webinars. Okay, so. Uh, move on to the question and answer uh, the first question is um, we have various type of grounding wiring system from the distribution board or cabinet from equipment in a building these what are the three and how do we terminate and test them we have various Bro, so maybe can you can you try to answer this one? Sorry, Michael. Yeah, I had problem with the bit. Yeah. The question uh, number the question number one, bro. Uh, we we have various type of grounding wiring from the distribution board or cabinets from the equipment. It's what what are three and how do we determine the test them? What are three? Yeah, I don't really understand about this question. What are three? Oh yeah, but uh maybe yeah how to we can review a little bit about little the, bit, okay. uh, the grounding the grounding testing. Maybe I can share my uh, my screen. Uh, how can I share my screen? Okay, let me as presenter. Yep, show my screen. Okay, so yeah, let, let's discuss a little. Let's discuss a little bit about the the grounding here, sir. Just to review, but well, yeah, we have we have another webinar about uh, you know, about the grounding, but yeah. 
to give you information about how to test the grounding system of our of our uh, building, for example. How can I start here? Okay. Um, there are a lot of methods to do the testing for grounding, sir, but there are two types to test the, the grounding. The first one is the earth resistivity. So we need to test the earth resistivity first in order for us to determine where to put the, the grounding properly. We need to test the soil first. That, you know, to determine that, ah, this is the, uh, the location where I need to put my, my ele electrode because this is the point where the resistivity is okay, okay? So in a building, um, you can do, this will be for another webinar, but yeah, just to give you some idea, uh, these are the different methods of, uh, of uh, earth testing for buildings, okay? The first one is we have a, the dual clamp method. So meaning we use this clamp to measure the resistance of our grounding. But as you can see here in the picture, the important resistance that we need to get is between this electrode. This is our ground or earth resistance. However, if you do the clamp uh, testing, you need to consider this loop here. Maybe you have a loop. Because what we need to do in the dual clamp is that to run a current on the circuit, on this circuit here. So that we can measure just the specific grounding circuit, not this circuit here. So we need to disconnect this loop in order for us to check, you know, the real grounding resistance. Okay, so that's the first method. We can do the dual clamp. The other method is... Uh, maybe I can also discuss about the dual clamp method uh, because there is a, a question below. Uh, how does the dual clamp, I guess, is working? The dual clamp has two cores, okay? The first core is the supply. So it supply a voltage, constant voltage, and it induces current. So this provides current to the circuit or to the loop. And then we have another core that measures the voltage drop and the current, the induced current. And so we can have the resistance. So we have dual dual core in, in that clamp, and we measure we measure the resistance by measuring the output of this core by this core here. Okay. And, and that is the dual clamp principle. Another test is the follow potential test. So we can do the follow potential test using the MFT that was presented by Ali. So what it does, you have this electrode here. So you can connect something like this. Okay. So this is the length of your electrode or your, I mean, the test probe. And it must go up to the 68% of this distance here. So what it does, it supply current to the loop. So what is the loop here? As you can see, the loop is from this electrode going to that electrode test probe and looking at the resistance of this, uh, uh, of this portion here. So this is actually our um, earth resistance. But with the follow potential, the the resistance that we need to that we need to look at is the 62% of this distance or the 61.8% of this distance because that is where it stabilizes the, the value of the resistance. So that means that is your earth resistance here, the 62%. That is the follow potential test. So that is the second method. The first method is the dual uh, by using the clamp. The next method is the follow potential method. And another method, if you don't have any way to disconnect your electrode from the system, then we have this called attached rod technique. Meaning, since we cannot disconnect the electrode from the system, we, can, we need to measure the current here 
that is maybe uh, provided by by the circuit from the building so there are still some current here for example if you have some ground uh, ground fault so if there is no way to disconnect the rod then you need to do the attach rod technique in the attach rod technique you need the clamp to measure the current that was not provided that is not provided by the the test equipment this current here is is current from the uh, existing circuit that you have maybe if you have some ground fault then 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 there will be a current here and that current should be deducted from the total current because it's not actually from the unit current it's not actually from the measuring current okay so that's why we need to put the clamp here and that is what we call the attached rod technique so those are the methods that i guess uh, i believe that can be used for for uh, you know for any electrical or earth uh, system so another question here uh, what is what is the mega instrument used for carrying out this grounding test well we have a lot sir as, as ali mentioned we have the det's digital earth tester so yeah, and the MFT that was presented is actually a multifunction tester that includes the earth testing as well. Yes, the certificate will be sent out in two days' time for those who completed the webinar. I want to test for continuity of my cable from the cabinet. Uh, I want to test for continuity of my cable from the cabinet or distribution box to the socket how is it conducted well uh, first of all sir you need to be uh, familiar with the circuit diagram of, of your system and then you need to you need to you need to know where the, the cable is going you know the ends of the cable so sometimes when we do the testing for earth yeah we need to be familiar on on the circuit so, for example, if you have three-phase system, uh, what you need to do is to dis disconnect the loads, of course, because that will uh, give you another continuity and high resistance. When we do the continuity, our, object our objective or what we want to see is actually a low resistance because that is continu continuity. So, that should be a low resistance. So, if we have in the tester, for example, it shows high resistance, and then that means you have some open circuit or maybe you still have load that is connected to that particular circuit or to that particular particular loop so normally when we do the uh, continuity testing we need to uh, to uh, disconnect the load and also the breaker should be off okay so yeah we, we need to be actually it's uh, uh, what they call that uh, you, you need to be familiar with the circuit uh, diagram and you need that diagram uh, what standard traceability is used to calibrate the test instruments such to take to check the accuracy of the instrument standard traceability well actually sir every time we deliver the unit there is a calibration report and there will be a calibration certificate so in that certificate, uh, you will see the, the standard that, that is being used uh, uh, on that particular calibration. So different equipment, different, different uh, calibration systems. So in, in the report, you will see the traceability or the standard traceability. I want to calibrate my MEGAR insulation resistance tester but based on client recommendation my test equipment should be certified on every three months interval please how do i go about it they have their own standards sir that every three months but because mega is recommending uh to have the insulation resistance calibrated every every year so once a year so in this case um, Maybe you have some uh, local cal calibration uh, facility, or maybe you have some uh, calibration institute. So you can you can do uh, you can check the calibration with them uh, of your unit. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, or uh, or maybe if your client, sorry, Michael just ate information. Go, go, if your go, client go. agree, because it's very seldom your three every three month calibrate calibrate uh, your equipment. But maybe you can use the, the the verification tools from from Maker or from other brand maybe. But we have some block block to calibrate uh, to to check. To check the 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 measurement with the one box consists some uh, resistance value, and to verify the measurement is still in range, still in tolerance. Maybe you can discuss with your customer uh, using this uh, box to verify that your equipment still uh, still in range. So maybe they will agree not to do three month uh, calibration. Yeah, the, the equipment name is I think CCB. This moment, do you remember Michael CBA? I think, yeah, no, uh, this moment, uh, I will share to you, I will send a, uh, information about the type of the, the box to this customer, yeah, Michael. Okay, yeah, thank you, bro. And we have another question here. Uh, in earth testing, what does the device do? I mean, does the device inject voltage and current? So as I've told you, sir, uh, referring to this circuit, for example, okay. So this is the device that we have. We have uh, ammeter and we have voltmeter, but we do have current supply here. So we need to inject current. Of course, that current is being pushed by a constant voltage coming from from the tester, and that tester will measure the voltage drop across this uh, line here. Okay, so you have the voltage, you have the current, then you can apply the Ohm's law to measure the resistance. And also the same as the, the clamp method. Remember, we have dual core for clamp. This is the, 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 the current. Uh, Core is the voltage core, so we inject current and then we measure the voltage. Voltage drop. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, potential earthing radius. I have instrument safety, instrument earthing, potential safety, and, and potential safety as far as grounding is concerned. How is it? Yeah, I already, I already presented, sir, the, how, how to test the ground. Okay, so I guess that's all the questions that we have for today. So at this point in time, I would like to say thank you, everyone, for joining us. And yeah, we will be having more... Uh, webinar something like this and we will give you more about theories on how to do this testing in next month i guess that would be the basic electrical test okay so thank you everyone for joining us we hope to see you again next time please have a good day and stay safe thank you grace and thank you so michael and grace and thank you everyone michael, michael, thank bye. you bye everyone bye 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 唔使你講嘢係咪啊，豬仔？